when you get work like that by Rosado, it's time to retire, man. Um, I heard Glenn Tapia was slurring a speech before the before the fight in the in the pre fight interviews, and people were like, "Dude, Tapia shouldn't even be fighting." And it, after a performance like that, it shows. When Rosado starts working you, beating you up, outboxing you, and dropping you, Rosado has very little power. He has like a 30% KO ratio, not a lot. That's one of his issues besides the skin tissue is his lack of power. If he had any type of power, he might have been Quillen or might have lasted a little longer against the Mew. I don't know. His skills are limited as well. But... Tapia, time to retire. He was always very stiff in there, kind of a one-dimensional type of fighter, always looking for the knockout. He's very strong. He has a big back, very muscular type of guy, but he his skills were off all the time. Um, yeah, he's not very skilled. He's not a very good boxer. His um, he his legs are heavy, kind of a, he kind of cement feet. So he had a decent career, beat a lot of. Decent contenders, uh, a lot of journeymen like Deshaun Johnson. So, mm, you know, he fought um, Kirkland, Rosado. I forgot who else he lost to, but he, he had a good career, man. Five losses. Yeah, It's time to look out for your health. I know he's been reluctant on retiring, but time, time, to, time to retire. The reason I'm talking about that more than the fight is because the fight... Didn't really live up to expectations after the first two rounds. I was like, okay, it's pretty even. Um, Tapia was was kind of rocking Rosado in the first few rounds. He rocked him with a jab in the first few seconds of the fight, which was interesting. I was like, oh, okay, okay. Tapia came to fight, but he was, he kind of gassed himself out after the first two rounds. He really did. His conditioning wasn't there. His conditioning was awful in this fight. And Rosado just started moving and boxing him. And by the fourth round, he was noticeably going back and getting hurt by Rosado's punches. After the fifth round, it was like, okay, Tapia's getting hit at will by Rosado. By Rosado. Not a great boxer, a good fighter. Um, never really went above the gatekeeper level. And Tapia's, um, Tapia's officially a journeyman at this point, I would say. And Rosado is a borderline journeyman. Uh, definitely still a gatekeeper. Fight I want to see is Tapia Chavez Jr., baby. Give me that fight. I want to see Chavez Jr., Rosado. That would be Rosado's biggest fight of his career and a very winnable one <laughs> for him. That would be his biggest win of his career. I still got Jr. by knockout, but that, that should be a good fight. Or how about a fight against Gary O'Sullivan? Ooh. Or is it Sullivan? I think his name is Sullivan. But either way, he's Irish and he can crack. <coughs> Excuse me. So, but that, that'd that be a good scrap as well. So, good, good card as well. You had Gibson versus um, Barrero on the undercard. And that was a bloodbath, man. A close fight. They give it to Gibson by, by split decision. No, majority decision. A uh, judge had it a draw. And I think 98-92 was a little wide for that fight, but... Gibson deserved the decision, no doubt. No doubt about it in my mind. Good, good card. Um, like I said, Tapia Rosado didn't really live up to expectations, but that's because Tapia was as washed up as everybody thought he was, man. So, good career for Rosado as well. I, I do want to see him fight again. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Peace.